Hello. Well, I love video recorders, so I couldn't turn it down when I was offered three machines, all of which were very expensive in their day. Uh, so I'm going to uh, take a look at all three of those over the next few days. There's too much to do in one video now. So let's get stuck in, starting with a very large DV cam deck. So here's the DSR60P. It's one of the very early DV cam decks that's been given to me. And look at the size of the machine. When you consider that it's designed to take that size tape, or even, I understand it, it'll take mini, mini DV tapes. Yeah, it's a very big machine for such a small tape. This was also true of uh, some early DVC Pro machines. Actually, I have a DVC Pro tape here. And just out of curiosity, if this machine does work, we'll actually try the DVC Pro. Pretty sure that won't work. But let's have a look at this machine. Uh, there's a pop-down panel here, but I'm sure it's, had, it's supposed to have some sort of nice little pop-down mechanism. It doesn't seem to be working, so there may be an issue there. And here you can make a couple of adjustments, go through the menus, SC phase, sync phase. So there's a couple of adjustments there. Um, ah, yes, look, it says it'll take DV or mini DV. So it should take the mini DV tape. That'll be interesting. Remote local switch. We'll better switch up to local. It won't do anything. Top is missing off the stop button. I see it's illuminated by LEDs. Looks like the knob's missing off the headphone control. Looking underneath, I noticed earlier some more damage. It's got three of the four feet. That one looks like it may have taken a little bit of impact damage. And this one over here is really quite mangled. So I don't think that's done any internal damage. But uh, just be wary of that. I've had a machine, a DVC Pro machine, that had that sort of effect where if the leg was badly crushed. Let's look around the back. Well, what are we missing on this digital video recorder? We've got reference video in and it's two reference video ins, I think and out. We've got time code out, mono audio out, strange choice, S video out, hmm. component out, or we can switch out to RGB, so it could be YEV or RGB, composite video out, one with superimposed um, time codes for example, audio out via balanced connectors, What are we missing? TBC remote for time-based corrector and a cabled remote control. So, quite a few things missing here from what you'd expect on a video recorder. Uh, there seems to be, so it's got four channel audio out, but where is audio in? This must be a player. Yes digital video cassette player, the DSR60P. So there's no input. There's the first failing. Actually, I don't care much about input anyway. But clearly something fundamental here is it's got no digital outputs. There's an optional extra for SDI out. And I can capture SDI in my machines, but of course what you'd expect to find is Firewire or DV. And as I understand it, there was another optional extra board that gave you DV, but still not on a firewire connector, and how useful that is, I don't even know. So this machine is extremely limited in its usefulness because there's no digital output as installed. Uh, so it's almost not worth the bother, but we'll hook it up to a monitor in a moment and we'll see if it fundamentally works. I also want to see what's inside. Um, dare I even power it up with that big dent in the bottom? Let's go on let's have a look I might regret doing this without having dealt with that bent foot first but let's do it I 
Okay, I'll switch on my isolated supply. And then we'll switch this on. Welcome to DV Cam. I don't know if you could see that with that light on. I'll just move the light slightly. Should we do that again? Remember the um, Betacam SP machines? You might have seen that in one of my other videos. It says, welcome to Betacam SP. Audio mode, two channel, and it gives you the sample rate, 48 kilobits per second. Nice for you meters, nice clock. But before we do anything with that, I think we'll take the lid off, and I'll also hook it up to the monitor so we can uh, see if we get anything useful out of it. Undoing these screws, I see that the um, top cabinet screws are captive. That's a nice touch. One thing, of course, that's always striking about this sort of machine, as it is with DVC Pro, is how big the machine is and yet how tiny the video head drum is. Because, of course, it's compatible with DV, so it has to be compatible with mini DV camcorders. So you get this tiny, tiny little video head. Can you see that? Maybe you can't. Let me adjust things. Tiny little video head there on this enormous machine. So some of the empty slots in there are marked SDI. So that would be for the SDI digital output option. OK, I'm connected up to uh, this old TV. Let's see what we got. Switch it on first. Works better that way. Okay. We have something there. No cassette. Let me insert a cassette then. Seems to work. It actually seems to work. Stop. I'll turn that volume down. So that seems to be. Oh, it's. We're, I don't know if we've just head clogged, but we only seem to be reading one head. Yes. Um, it's gone all stripy. That's working. Yeah, there's no actual fault with it. Let's eject. Well, they're good. I think this is worth having a look at a, a, the, the um, a close up of the mechanism because it's quite something. Watch the eject. Wonderful. Let's uh, put in a mini DV tape and see what it does. So here we have mini DV. An error has been detected. It's 
Shall we try that again? So that part of the mechanism that sets it up for the small tape, well, it's successfully driven the two spools in, because you can see that set up for mini DB size. But for some reason, perhaps it doesn't think it has. It may be a sensor problem. Let's have a look again. Right. Let's go again with the large tape. Or we should see those spools go wide. The same thing happens on Beta Chem SP, of course. There we are, they went wide. No. Uh -huh. Suddenly decided to start working. Eject. I think I'm going to try just pushing the mini DV tape a little harder. So here we are, mini DV tape again. Let's just make sure I push it in firmly. Ah, that was it. Maybe I was being a bit too, too gentle with it. And that's playing just fine. Meanwhile, let's have a look at the uh, display here. So this is a mini DV tape. From a domestic camcorder, this one. Let's eject that. And once more, just to make sure it definitely does go in okay. It's a fascinating machine. I love it, but how useful is it? I absolutely love this machine. It's just completely ridiculous. It's so big and does so little, but it does it so well. Uh, it's it's a fantastic piece of kit, but unfortunately there's no real value in this at all. And I'm afraid it's going to go into my um, pile of uh, machines to maybe use one day if I'm really desperate. On the plus side, well, it could be used for for just monitoring what's on uh, DV tapes um, but it's uh, and for zipping through and finding out how long they are it's useful for that sort of thing and maybe for rewinding actually but it's a very bulky machine for so limited use oh yes I did promise I was going to try the DVC Pro tape this is D DVC Pro 25 type recording I believe let's see what happens Probably just a terrible playback. Not usable. Oh, that was an interesting message. Let's see that again. Tape not usable. How does it know the difference? Okay. There's obviously a difference that I didn't know about between DVC Pro and DV Cam. There's some extra holes here on the DV cam. Anything else? Are they the ident holes to tell it that it's DV cam or DVC Pro? Don't know. There may be something more intelligent. It may be something to do with the chip that's in here. Oh no, that one's got no chip anyway. The DVC Pro has no chip. Only the DV cam, uh, DVC Pro does. So uh, it must be those ID identical uh, ident holes down there. Um, let's see if we can see any pins to detect those in that part of the um, 
mechanism. No, I can't see anything. It's not that easy to see what you're doing down there. Okay. Oh yes, let's start up the menu. Menu. Set up menu. Hours meter. What do I do? Drum hours T2. 710. Never. That's really low. And what? Well, it says it's done um, a lot of hours, total hours, 19830 roughly. But a lot of that time could have been sat there just idling. Tape running, 480 hours. That's just nothing, is it? Well, I don't know what to say. It's it's um, had very little use. Okay, I'll put this machine back together. It's been tested and I may be able to find a use for it of some sort. Let's go and play with some of the other things. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at this uh, very big DV cam deck. Um, I'm going to do the other two video recorders over the next few days, so uh, please uh, look out for those. Uh, and in the meantime, do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe so I'll do more content in the future on audio and video technology. Bye for now.